Welcome to the Learning Zone with Ms. Beachley, Ms. Hall, and Ms. Bates. Okay, boys and girls, happy Friday. Um, I am wearing my Furman shirt. Let me see if you can see that. Yep. Um, so I hope you're wearing your Furman gear too. Um, it is Friday, so this is kind of going to be an easy end of week wrap up for you. We're going to be using text evidence when responding to a writing prompt. We're going to be using that race format. And I'm going to go over in a little more detail today than I normally would about the race format, just because it's been a while since we've been together using that format. So today's agenda, you should be finishing up and wrapping up that phonics practice. You're going to watch this instructional video. You're going to do your end of week respond to reading question. You're going to make sure you wrap up any pages you haven't done in your your turn book. You're going to keep getting that I ready practice in. And then if you've been writing your response to reading questions, we ask that you upload them to either Google Classroom or Class Dojo. So let's get started. I will attach the link to the race video in this in Google Classroom because this is a great video and most of our students love it um, when thinking about the race format. The race format is a writing strategy and we use this when we're answering open-ended questions. So there's four steps to race and it's, it's an acronym. So R stands for restate the question. A stands for answer the question. C is cite evidence and E is explain your reasoning. So I'm going to go through these four steps with you today on how I would get started on a response to reading questions um, for this week. We're going to be answering an open-ended question about Grace for President using this strategy. So our question that we're going to be working through this today is, how did Grace make a difference in the story Grace for President? I know how you felt Grace made a difference in the story Grace for President. But when you're answering that question, you need to make sure that you're using evidence from the story itself and that you're explaining how that evidence supports your answer. That's why we use the race strategy. So with letter R, we are restating the question. So when you restate the question, you have to turn that question into a statement. I'm going to be using the pen feature today to show you how I would change that question into a statement. So remember when we restate the question, we don't want to just say the question all over again. You have to turn that question around into a statement. Some of the things you want to do is you want to take off some of the prompt and the question words. So for example, we don't want to leave how did. I see this a lot in student responses. They say how Grace made a difference was, but that's actually not correct. You want to you want it to be a statement. So, for example, I would start with in the story, capital letter. I would start with in the story. That would be part one. Grace for president. Two. Grace made a difference. So if you look here, that's going to be three. If you look here, it had make. So that's another thing you want to make sure you're focusing on when answering these questions. So it, I asked how to grace make a difference. When you're answering the question, you're going to have to change that into a past tense verb. So instead of saying make, you want to make it made. Grace made a difference. Okay. So let me show you on the next slide what this would look like all together. So in the story Grace for President, Grace made a difference and then I added in that word by. That by is a good transition word that's going to take me right into my A which is answer the question. When we answer the question, we want to make sure we're answering all the parts of the question. This is a pretty simple one-parted question. We're answering, how in Grace for President did Grace make a difference? Okay, so now we're getting into cite and explain. And the biggest difference between citing and explaining is 
that when we're citing, it's coming directly from the text, but my explanations are my own ideas. So when I'm citing, I want to use those key details and facts from the text which is a great use of our close reading routine because during this whole week, you should have been marking up that text and highlighting important parts, talking about what the main ideas are, using that summary, that point of view, all that evidence you've gathered is great places to look for those explanations and those citations of how you think Grace made a difference. When I'm citing, I look straight in the text. I say something like, the author says, according to the text, for example, I know because. So I said, the author says that Grace listened to what issues were important to her class. That came straight from the text. I didn't put that in quotation marks because I paraphrased it in my own words, but I looked straight back into the text and I found that page that we looked at yesterday where it said that Grace listened the issues that were important to her classmates. Now, when I go in to explain that citation, I'm then explaining why this evidence supports my answer. So we always want to make sure that we're not just pulling things from the text just because. We want to make sure that whatever we said was the reason that Grace made a difference, that that citation, that evidence matches our answer. We don't want our answers to be all over the place. So I said, the evidence tells us that Grace made a difference by listening to her classmates. That's my own idea. It didn't say that that's how Grace made a difference, but that's how I am inferring or I am thinking about how Grace made a difference. So when we're explaining, we want to use things like this shows, the evidence tells me, this is why, this means, it is clear that. Now, a big thing that I think a lot of us get lost on is the fact that you can have multiple citations and multiple explanations in your answer. So sometimes it's not going to look like R-A-C-E. It's going to look like R-A-C-E-C-E-C-E. -E -C -E -C -E. Every time you use a citation, you want to explain that citation. That's all I really have for you today. I want you to take a shot at doing this race response. I'm going to be looking at those race responses and see where I can give some feedback and some explanation next week to make those responses even better. This is a learning process for all of us. So let's go into some next steps and make sure that we're wrapping up that week well. You wanna make sure you answer this end of week wrap up question using the race format. I've actually created a spot for you to put that. You wanna work in your Your Turn Practice book on page 210. You want to upload your answers to any comprehension questions that you've done this week on Class Dojo or Google Classroom if you haven't been doing them digitally. I've seen a lot of you are using that form for respond to reading, and I've really been enjoying reading those responses. Make sure that all your pages from 201 to 210 are complete in your practice book. That covers the whole week of content. And you want to check your iReading minutes in your My Progress tab. If you've been following along and doing I Ready every day, you should have just about 60 minutes of reading. It doesn't include what you're assigned to for math. And I just hope you enjoy your weekend and congrats on making it through your first week of digital learning.